Hi everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Lisa Beretta, who is here offering us an astrological reading for 2014. So I'm super excited to find out what the next year has installed for me. So welcome, Lisa. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about what I can expect for 2014. Well, 2014, it's going to be a very interesting year. We still have something operative, which is called the, the, the Pluto-Uranus aspect, which basically translation for that means we're still going to have to deal with a little bit of uh, upheaval and power plays with the different governments and you know just trying to quell things a little bit. But on the upside, I do feel that Globally, we, we are going to see, you know, finances start to finally settle down. There may be a little bit of a shakeup around April, May, but for the most part, people should start to feel a little bit better financially. Mm -hmm. uh, big issue, too, is, is health care. I, I, I know a lot of people are concerned about that. I still feel that there's going to be some challenges in pulling that off with, without a hitch. You may see some small little groups revolt against uh, being told what to do because once again that Pluto Uranus aspect uh, makes people want to feel independent and not under control. So uh, we're we're going to be dealing with that both globally and, and personally throughout this year. Okay, so that and so I've always wondered. So that Pluto, Pluto and what is it? Pluto and, Uranus and Uranus. Those two things when they they're aligned in the way that they're doing, then that just makes me feel independent. And that makes everyone, irrespective of your astrological sign, it brings up that in everyone. Well, yeah, Uranus represents the, the person who wants to march to the beat of their own drummer, the authentic person, the creative person, the futuristic thinker, technology. Pluto comes in and likes to control. Pluto oh. will take something totally apart and rebuild it the way they want it. So you, you have these two planets that are in constant dialogue with each other. And, you know, when they go retrograde, which means they appear to be going backwards, even though they're not going backwards, at those times things are a little bit quiet. But when they get moving forward again, it's like trying to run after a kid who you're saying you, you have a curfew, you can't stay out past 10 o'clock, and they're right. waving goodbye to you, and they're still going. Right. You know, so it's, you're, you're going to see where basically people start to question their governments, both locally uh, and even on a grander scale, too. It's about control. And I think we've already seen some of this happen in Egypt and other countries where people are revolting against this being told what to do. Okay, so I've talked to all of these um, folks about 2012. And so they said, well, 2012 was the end of that era. And 2013, this year, is all about building that new era. And and so this actually fits in with that astrologically, too. It seems like it's kind of it's about rebuilding something new and letting go of some of the foundational pieces that used to be that can only happen when those energies arise. So are the planets aligning with this 2013 era? Is there a coordination between the planets and this era that the Mayan calendar and misery? Oh, this is this is so interesting. Yes, it, it it is, and you know we get so caught up in our our day to day things. We we really don't we discount what goes on astrologically. And mm -hmm. back in Babylonian times, this this was a science. This was they would predict trends before they predict the weather. And what we have right now, the Mayans are very much like in Hinduism, where they believe in certain eras or stages. Uh, like the end of one era and the beginning of another one. So 2012 really wasn't the end of the world, but it was an end of the old antiquated way of thinking. We're moving away from dogma, where people are becoming more spiritual. Uh, we're starting to really explore what our essence is because we are body, mind, and spirit. We are just not physical bodies, and we, we get so caught up in the material world, we forget about the, the other aspects of ourself. And astrologically, you're right. Our planet has moved into another spot within the galaxy, mm. and we're pulling in all these energies from other star systems, and it does. It, it affects our own atmosphere, and, and there are people who are like, oh, that's, that's crazy. How can that happen? But it can happen. Energy, we're all energy sensitive, and astrology works that way. You know for yourself, if you're around somebody who's depressed or low energy, you'll walk away, and you may not even feel that great when you leave them. All right. But when you're around up, people that are upbeat you feel great afterwards the same thing with the planets when you're under the influence of the energy of a, a planet that's is very serious like saturn 
that could be a time in your life where you're going through taking on a lot of responsibility and, and feeling like older than your years. But then when you're around the planet like Jupiter, it's one big party. <laughs> so the, the planets do, as Edgar Cayce, the great American psychic, said, the, the planets, what they do is they compel you to do certain things. They, they, inf they influence you, they, but they, and they ask that you take advantage of certain seasons of the sky. But they, mm. they're, you always have to remember you have free will and free choice. That's why we're so unique, because yeah. we do have the ability to make choices. And I like that idea of that when you're around someone who has like, you know, kind of dense energy, it makes you feel denser. So the planet of Pluto and then Uranus, those have energy. So those energies being in a certain alignment with us are going to stir up those particular energies within us. That's what I'm getting about what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. And depending on your own personal birth chart, you're, you're more than just your sun sign. If someone goes to an astrologer and they can say you could even go online, some sites will put your chart up yeah. just for free. And see where the planets are and where they fall on your chart, and, and you can see what area of your life will be affected. Sometimes it's an insignificant area, and sometimes it's major. Uh, I see. So this is the energy around you. Then it actually depends on your time of birth and what house. I guess it's the house, right? Whether it's the house like one, one through 12 house systems, where it is. That's the area of your life where this kind of energy will affect you. Exactly. And then you can even get more complicated if you're in a relationship, you take their chart and you lay it on top of your chart and now you're adding all these different ingredients. So it, it's really more than just reading your daily horoscope on a website or in a newspaper because it is so involved and if you really take the time to talk to a professional astrologer or even buy a book and delve into it a little bit more, you'll see it is actually a tool for self-discovery instead of some type of superstition that we've been thinking of it as for years yeah so then the self-discovery in this coming year then is saying okay i'm going to have some aspect of my life where i'm going to feel that kind of like i want to move forward and kind of plow my own way and be my own person or whatever that may be and absolutely and what i think is interesting is that that also kind of combines with i'm i just turned 50 and that energy of turning 50 they talk about it as a gateway in um chinese uh Chinese face reading, but it's it's a time where you already have that energy. So I must be like triple that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well. The thing that I like as we move into this new era of planets and star systems, where the Earth is now this this new phase of beyond twenty twelve. Our relationship to time has shifted and changed. Mm -hmm. So this is great. Fifty is now the new thirty. Yeah. So you should, you might have twenty more years until you catch up to the Chinese version of fifty, because we are it it's our relationship time as we are finding out is an illusion. It's not linear; it goes yeah. in a loop. It's a Pluto and Uranus. What else is happening on a, a, a uh, uh, huge planetary limit? We we have. Well, I like to look at the outer planets when we want to talk about general trends for everyone, because they they affect everyone in pretty much the same fashion. Saturn right now is going through Scorpio, mm -hmm. so it'll be there about another year and a little bit, and what that does, a lot of Scorpios or people with Scorpio prominent in their chart, or, or Taurus, because that's the opposite sign, may feel a little bit more responsibility coming on, but responsibility doesn't have to be bad. You could be buying a new home, having an addition to your family, taking care of an elderly parent, maybe starting your own business, so it's how you look at this energy. Mm -hmm. Some people say Saturn. No, that's bad. I don't. I don't want a Saturn transit. It's, why not? It's. It signifies a period of growth and responsibility, and sometimes you you have to buckle down. So mm -hmm. Saturn's going to affect everyone in some fashion where it's a responsibility. Saturn represents limits, boundaries, mm -hmm. uh, older things, tradition, and responsibility. Uh -huh. And uh, they usually say it either rewards or punishes. So if if you've been a good person and you've done what you've had to do, you're rewarded. If you haven't, you may have to go over and do that lesson again. My understanding is that this is happening regardless of whether I'm a Scorpio. I'm going to still feel that kind of energy. Everybody's going to feel some some type of Saturn. And Saturn and Scorpio, uh, generally what it is, and it, since it's in a sign that has to do with regeneration, um, you know, it because it is traditionally they said it was the phoenix rising from the ashes, even though we look at it as the scorpion. Or some, some signs even say maybe it was an eagle. But what this does with Saturn there, everyone feeling the Saturn in Scorpio is more, if you want to take it as based on the chart of the United States, we could say 
uh, we're more aware of maybe who is spying and checking on us because it would be in the 12th house. It's right. like, you know, we have to be more aware. We have to be more vigilant about what we do put on the Internet and and how much do we want to share? What secrets do we want to let out? We need to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if we do intuitively start to read other people or we know things, or even if we just read something about someone on, on Facebook, whatever, do you want to share it? You have to start to take responsibility for what you know. Ah, okay, so this is an interesting energy to be com combined with uh, Pluto and Uranus, right? Because you have one thing that's like independent. I want to forge my own way. I'm like rooting against, like I'm questioning everything about establishment. And then you have this big establishment energy. And then, I mean, it's kind of interesting how these two are. I think we're going to see those dynamics play out all year where, you know, everything's going to be presented to us and it may be presented as a uh, iron fist in a velvet glove where we think yeah. it sounds good. But I really, I personally feel that Uranus energy is going to win out. I do feel people are going to start to stand up for themselves because another thing that I look at as an astrologer, every year there are the eclipses, the solar and the lunar eclipses. Mm -hmm. Now last year it was affecting the, the Taurus and the, the Scorpios the most. We're coming into the cycle now where we have Aries and Libra because they're always opposite each other. Mm -hmm. And what happens? We're going to have these ecliptic points. They're going to start to set off that Uranus going through Aries mm -hmm. because it's there for a few more years. It, I think it spends about seven years in a sign. So these eclipses are really going to set things off. It's like somebody has the firecracker and somebody comes along with the match. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting year. It wow. is going to be an interesting year, but to just calm everybody down, it's not going to be the end of the world. <laughs> there, no, any changes we see are necessary changes in order for humanity to to continue its upward uh, growth instead of being, you know, held down by oppressive ideas and antiquated ideas. Yeah, I think of 2013 and 2014 being, being about regenerative, right? In order to regenerate and start anew, you have to take down what's not working. And a lot of exactly. those things are funda foundational pieces. And if you don't ever question the foundation on which you've been resting on, which is hard. But if you don't do it, nothing new is going to arise because you'll just be sitting plop down in your like comfort, comfort place, right? I, I think we're all being asked right now to let go of, you know, an idea of like, we tradition is good. You, you do need to have a sense of where you came from. So you have a foundation for sure, where you're going, yeah. but you have to know when to let go. Mm -hmm. and move on and when something doesn't work you you honor what you gathered from it and you let it go yeah you know there's still people that are fighting on a personal level over uh an argument they have with their children and then when we look at countries there's countries that are still arguing over things that really like let it let it go easier said than done yeah. but i really feel that this energy coming in it's going to just say that we make this shift. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting year because it, we're going to see people stand up for themselves. We're going to get rid of all the oppressive things that don't work. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of upheaval because there are those who like to hold on to the old ways. Right. And I feel that before 2014 is over, we're going to find out we have galactic neighbors. Ooh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect note. I just hope they have good shopping malls. I'm not open <laughs> for it. It's just uh, yeah, it's some really what kind of goods do you have? <laughs> interesting food. I think that there are many opportunities. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Lisa. Tell us about your website if you want to get in touch and do our own personalized reading with you. Yes. If you'd like to reach me, you can reach me at www. Lisa Beretta, that's B A as an Apple, R R E as an Edward, T T A dot com. Okay, thank you so much for our 2014 reading, and I appreciate I appreciate your predictions. I hope they're true. I'd like to meet an alien as long as they're friendly and don't just decide to destroy our planet. <laughs> It'd be interesting. All right, thank you. All right, Have a good 20, you. rest of Bye. 2013. Bye.